Hey everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I think that might be my new thing anyways. Um, glad to see everybody here today and I hope that you're enjoying these little video lessons. Um, they, as you, if you've been to a bunch of them, um, hey Paul, good, I know I'm up. Has anyone seen my mojo? I've lost it. Okay, Paul, I'm going to talk to you about your mojo like right now, and then I'm going to get into today. I lost my mojo, I'd say in January, and I shared this on my all day sew in on Saturday, last Saturday. And Ricky said, just pick up fabric and sew. You are a maker. You are a creative. Just sew. And I don't even care if it's just strips together. Get out some fabric, cut some strips, and sew. Okay, before we get into today's um, lesson, which is a little bit academic, and I apologize for those with brains like mine. Um, I, Margo, this is like, I love seeing my friends here. Anyways, um, we have some a really fun thing going on in Livermore, and I'm really tuned into the parents with the young kids at home. OK, um, they've got to be going out of their minds, especially if they were not homeschoolers to start with. Um, California is being very, very strict. And when Gavin Newsom, who's doing a fabulous job as governor, kind of cracked the whip, it was kind of shocking. And guess what? I think it's working. So we're still hunkering down here. And every day parents try to get their kids out of the house, like for walks or bike rides. And I was on some site somewhere and they said, okay, what's the thing you like about this? Let's find some silver linings. And one of mine is I go for a walk every day and I'm seeing all these moms and dads on bikes with their kids, walking, whatever, when you know ordinarily those parents would be going to the gym and not interacting with their kids. So I see this as a really really cool thing and then the other day when I was on a walk there's one house down and around the corner who um, either doing this with their kids they have something in their front yard in their front window or something to uplift people who are passing by and then I'm sure a lot of you do the whole next door thing um, Somebody in our neighborhood and in my daughter's neighborhood, which is a couple blocks away, suggested that um, we do um, a party, a teddy bear party, a scavenger hunt. And what they're asking residents to do is in their front window, you put a teddy bear and then when they, they go out and walk with their kids, they can find this teddy bear. So um, the only teddy bear I have <laughs> Looks like something from a Chucky movie. It was, <laughs> I mean, it's bad, but it's the only one I have. It's like about 60 years old at least, and it's falling apart at the seams. But um, I want to be part of this whole teddy bear parade. <laughs> Brigade is the word I'm going for. Um, and then I just saw on the next door thing that um, they're going to actually make this Friday the official teddy bear day. So I think this is a really cute idea uh, for neighborhoods. I'm hoping it's not raining. I just absolutely love it. Okay, that's taking care of the kids, but now what about you guys? Um, many of you know Lilo Bowman, who works with us. She does she does so much of the mastery and mystery behind the site. And a couple years ago, she put out what I would say is a college 101 class on design. And I will tell you, um, if... I could have all quilters take that class at their local JC, I tell you to go do it because honestly, I think it's the underpinning of who I am as a quilter today. Um, and so on Wednesday's newsletter and Sunday's newsletter, there will be an article that's um, part of the art of design with Lilo. 
And again, it is Wednesday's and Sunday's newsletter. And the thing I want to say is that she reached out to many experts in our industry. So you're getting the information from the top dogs, like Joan Wolfram did something on color. Um, it's just really, really good information. And I uh, Skyped with her, which probably you saw in today's newsletter. I love the idea that she says, grab a binder, print them out, and then you will have a reference book that you will treasure forever and ever. So thank you, Lilo, for having the idea of bringing that out again, because I know we have a lot of new people. Um, our newsletter does come out four times a week. It is absolutely free, but you do have to sign up and give us your email address so that um, we can get it to you. And also, if you have multiple emails or you are changing or have changed your email at thequiltshow.com, it's time for you to go in and update your profile, okay? Um, we're gonna be switching over to a new site and it's imperative that you are working with your most current email system. So let's see. Um, also, I don't know if you guys have watched the Carly show yet. It's um, Carly Porter, it's right now. She is an amazing person from the U from Utah, and she was actually raised in a town where graffiti art was revered and, and coveted. I wouldn't have thought that of Utah, but yay, okay. And um, so she has this show that shows how to do really cool lettering and then also how to take graffiti work and put it into your quilting. So if you have not yet watched that show, I would strongly recommend it. Um, and then for those of you who are not subscribing members and do not have access to our shows, um, we have a really cool deal right now because of the situation we're all in. This 1995 for the whole half, the whole half a year, for half a year. <laughs> And then one last thing, um, tomorrow, Ricky is going to do one of these lives. John has to work with him in the afternoon and hopefully they can get this all set up. And it will be one o'clock mountain time, which is 12 o'clock my time. So I've got to set my clock for that. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing today is a little academic, but one of you, and I should have written down your name. Oh, uh, Debbie, normally it's $49.95 for a year, but we're doing $19.95 for six months and also I think $39.95 for a year. So we're really taking the price down because we want to be able to be with you and entertain you throughout our um, quarantine, throughout our Quilters quarantine. So anyways, okay, what we're gonna do today is a little bit academic. I want you to know that I was horrible with math in high school, horrible. In fact, I flunked geometry, which I, well, I didn't flunk because I went and I begged my teacher to give me a C so my parents wouldn't get all mad at me. I mean, they would have flipped over a D. So I said, I'm not gonna say his name. I said, um, I would love it if you give me a C and I promise I'll take this class again. And he did and I did. Fast forward, my son was um, pretty well uh, situated in high school, like he was 25th in his class and stuff. So he was not a, he, he wasn't a slacker that happened in college, but anyways, <laughs> um, I guess he got a freak out sometime. Um, I went to back to school night and I looked up and is the same teacher. I, I I was just, I couldn't believe it. And so when my son came home and said, mom, I am flunking this. I said, I get it. Don't worry about it. Take it again from somebody else. So um, I, geometry is not my thing, but in quilt making, what do we use? Geometry, right? And so we have our own special little kind of geometry that we use. And one, one of the guests asked, um, how do I make different blocks, different sizes? Okay. So I, we had to learn this back in the day. I started quilting in 79, which means I've been doing this for 41 years. I cannot believe it. We had to draft blocks. We had to use rulers. We had to do all this stuff. And basically we would just draw the block 
the size that we wanted. So let's take a look at, let me go down to this camera and show you what I'm looking at here. So let's say I wanted to do this sawtooth star, okay? What I would have done is I would have gotten out graph paper, and this is eight to the inch, and if you look very, very carefully, uh, there's a dark line for every single one inch, okay? And then what we would do is we would take a drafting ruler. There weren't even rotary rulers out yet. And then you would take a quarter inch outside this, and there's the quarter inch line, and then you would draw it. And you would go around all the shapes like this, and then you would cut it out with cereal boxes. So let me go down here. And you would make yourself little templates. What a pain in the rear end, right? And then I would, and then I would make my little template and do it. So then, in 1979, um, the big revelation revolution came, and that was the rotary cutter. That was the game changer. Okay, and uh, it it was primarily designed for um, dressmaking. And then the quilters got into it. They discovered it. And I'll, my guess is we probably discovered it in 81 or something like that. And there were no rulers. There were no anything. And we would use these, these rulers to cut with our rotary cutting. Because we knew we couldn't use something metal because it would, you know, bump it up. But this would work. And it's amazing there aren't more quilters with missing fingers. Because, I mean, there is nothing to this. All right? And then... Somebody came up, then you had to look at a block and determine what to do, okay? that. So let me show you something. This book was a game changer for me. It helped me understand how do you draft a block, okay? I have to laugh. Um, this I paid $16.95 for. Can you believe it? What Jenny came up with, Jenny Beyer, let me make sure I've got room here, is a book with all of these block patterns. And when you look at a book, at a block, you have to determine what components it's made of. Is it a four patch? Is it a six patch? Is it an eight patch or whatever? And then you can go and draft it or then you can figure it out. So like this, I couldn't see what they were, but if I covered up four patch designs, okay, so this overlay is on it. Okay, it's a four patch. Oh, I, wait, I'm gonna do this one because this is the block we're playing with today. Okay, four patch. No, no, yeah, this is a four patch. And then this is a 16 patch. And when I put this on here, I think this is the one that most suits what's going on here. And so if this is one, two, three, four, and I wanna make this in four inches, that's easy. This would be one inch finished, one inch finished, one inch finished, one inch finished. If I wanted it six inches, it would be, okay, now I gotta do my two, one, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, or two and a half, two and a half, and that would be three. Is that right, you guys? Does that add up? Two and a half, two and a half? That doesn't add up. Okay, I just screwed up. Let me think. Okay, this was a dumb idea. Let me just get over here. <laughs> so, so what I want to do when I look at um, this block is I need to determine what size I want to do it. So let's start with this one. Let's start with something simpler here. Um, this is a nine patch. One, two, three, one, two, three. And why some are called two patch and some are called nine patch, you got me. But it divides into nine, into three pieces. So what you need to know with a square is that your magic number is a half. And what you do is you take the finished measurement. So if this is six inches, I would cut two, four, six. I would cut this square at two and a half. I would cut this square at two and a half and this square at two and a half. If I wanted to make it say nine inches, you would then say, well, 
This is three inches. This is three inches. This is three inches. If you wanted to make it 12 inches, that would be four, four, and four. And you take the finished size, not the raw size, and you add half an inch to it. It's really quite simple, but it's important to understand that this is what you're looking at, that it is basically a nine patch. One, two, three, one, two, three. So then let's go to the next thing. This too is a nine patch, just like this one. The only difference is, is that the corners have been cut to half square triangles and you have rectangles in here. And so it, let's go with six inches. If this is six inch finished, this is two inches, the magic number that you add to that is seven eighths. And what you're doing with this magic number is you're cutting a square that's two inches plus seven eighths, and then you're cutting it corner to corner. This leaves the outside on the straight of grain. You want this on the straight of grain. All right, so this is a half square triangle. Then rectangles, you would just add your half inch to it because it's basically the same thing as a square. But now let's get into my tricky little star that's one of my all-time favorites. You've got a bunch of different things going on here. You have your squares, okay? So I gotta, I gotta measure and see what the heck that would be. For six inches, that would be three, one and a half. Okay, this would be one and a half. Um, I can't write upside down. One and a half, three by one and a half, one and a half. No, now I've gotten the numbers right. Okay, so we know this is a square, so if this is one and a half inches finished, we're gonna cut it at two. And when I'm working on something like this, I will literally cut out the page, or make a, a drawing, and then circle the numbers of what I'm gonna do. Let's talk about this guy here. Okay, this I want on the straight, straight of grain. So let's do this. I want this on the straight of grain. So this is going to be your half square triangle. So if this is one and a half, basically, I'm gonna cut two and three eighths square, and then I'm gonna cut it corner to corner. So I would write two and three eighths, put an arrow up there and go like that. All right. But now this one, this is, it has a 90 degree, just like this here, but I want this line out here on the straight of grain. If I cut this, this like this, this is going to end up all wonky. So I want this on the straight of grain and so you take this finished measurement right across here and you add one and a quarter to it. So that is for quarter square triangles, one and a quarter. Then you cut it corner to corner. If I were to do a 12 inch sawtooth star, I would do the same thing. I would divide it into basically fours and so if it was 12, that would mean two, four, it would be three, three inches finished, six by three inches finished, three inches finished, and then I would do the math work. Here it is laid out just a little bit more. So basically what you do is you figure out the size block you want, and then you do the math. If you want, you can certainly um, draft it out and do all that, but there's really not a need for it. The main thing is to be aware of where you want the straight of grain to fall, and then you just do the math. And the reason I'm holding this here is that you can go back and snap this thing and take a picture of it and print it out if you don't know these numbers. Now, the other thing that I would like to say is that... Um, there are even more shapes and they all have these numbers. And these numbers are pertinent only if you're using a quarter inch seam. And these numbers, let's say you have a six inch block and you wanna go 12 inches. You don't just double, it, it doesn't work that way. You have to go through the steps. So 
in my mind, I've got these numbers committed to memory. I've got my half inch for a square, my seven eighths for a half square triangle, and a uh, for a quarter square triangle, one and a quarter. They're burned in my brain. And, and I can't read a spreadsheet. I can't do any of that. But once you get this, these numbers are no longer scary. Now, that said, um, this is a book that has 110 quilt blocks in it. And actually, I'm going to put this camera on so we can look at it. I'm really impressed with this book. I wish I, wish I had designed it. So right up here... You've got the block, and you, and then here, if you want to make it in three inches, here, I'm trying to figure, okay, that goes like that. Here's the cutting numbers. If you want it in six inches, nine inches, 12 inches, 15. This is a, basically a nine patch. Here is another, basically a nine patch. Wait, are we on the right thing? Yeah. But the thing is, is maybe you don't want a block that's, that's in this book, okay? So then you have to go and do what I just showed you. Um, I, I hope that I haven't, I hope I haven't confused you and I've helped you. To me, it's kind of a complicated subject matter, but not really once you get it. Um, so these poor, I'm looking at these things. I'm an, uh, okay, Jake, you're a new quilter and you don't understand the quarter inch. A quarter inch, is imperative and on your sewing machine there might even be a foot that has a quarter inch but the way you mark your machine is if it doesn't have a quarter inch is you take a ruler uh, here's a quote, the ruler that you're going to rotary cut with you put the ruler underneath the needle at ah, at a quarter inch and then you drop tape down the side it's just one of those things that is, and it's not to question. That's just what you do. And and one thing I learned from Sally Collins, which is fabulous, is before you sit down and sew, cut two strips of fabric that are one and a one and a quarter inch each, two strips, sew them, and then press them, and it should measure two inches. If it doesn't measure two inches, you do not have the right quarter inch. So that is uber uber important i can't begin to tell you so um what i'm going to do i i wanted to tell you in our store we're shipping um we have suzanne to who is bless her heart and i mean that in the best way she is working by herself shipping out orders and um we have, I'd say, about 20 of these if you're interested in it. And it's at thequiltshow.com. Um, also, if you order anything, we're going to throw in a red Frixion pence pen. And yesterday I showed how I used my Friction pen. And so um, that's just a freebie that we're throwing in. We're trying, to, we're trying to keep it real, but understand that we understand we are all in this together. Um, I want to see if you have any questions because I loved the quarter inch one. Um, how is it listed? I, um, I don't know. It's probably under, Kathy, I don't know your question. I'm sorry. Um, the other thing I'm going to ask you to do because I want to connect with quilters worldwide. And those of you who, you know, get the newsletter and all that at thequiltshow.com, you know this is going on. But I want to play a game today. I want you to share this from your Facebook page and then under the comments here, come back and say, I shared, all right? And then two of you will win this block tool book. And I don't even know how we'll get it to you. We'll figure that out behind the scenes. But I want to see how viral we can get these videos because honestly, while we're all sequestered, um, we are we can learn together and we can socially not have to distance in the comfort of our own home. It, it's funny because being an introvert, this has been just a blessing that I, and also ADD, I can't, I want to be by myself and I, 
I can't run outside or go across the street to the neighbors and all of that. So I'm in my sewing room and I'm getting a lot done and I'm actually getting a lot of uh, painting done from Joanne Sharp's class. So, okay, read a share. You guys just say you shared and you can keep sharing all day. And let's see where this takes us because guess what? We are here to learn. And um, next, I'll be, I'll be doing this Friday at 10 o'clock again. I'm thinking, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'll let you know tomorrow. But also tomorrow, don't forget, Ricky's gonna chime in. And I do have to tell you, he's at a little bit of a disadvantage because all of his quilting stuff is up at the house and he's down at the office now. But he is a man of many talents and I'm sure he will wow us with something. So, um, hey you guys, thank you so much. I so appreciate and we will see you Friday at 10 o'clock Pacific time. And until then, just sew your brains out. Bye.